How's everyone doing? I just wanted to hop on real quick, make a quick uh, tutorial on using your own custom WIM image on a basic Windows 10 or 11 uh, USB install disk. I've seen a lot of good videos out there for making the PE disk, uh, other good videos for, for using SysPrep uh, to capture, and so on and so forth. But I haven't really seen a lot of stuff out there on, on going the whole nine yards from you know, making the basic install disk, uh, then making the PE disk, then prepping your machine the way you want, then using, using SysPrep and booting back into Windows PE to capture, and then replacing the install.esd with your own install.wim. So just, just kind of wanted to go the whole nine yards here and, and, and cover that. Um, basically, the point of, of doing something like this would be if, if you were ever in a situation where you had like 10, 20 or, or more computers that uh, you had the image that had unique custom software and settings on it, uh, you know, rather than just putting basic windows on there and then installing all this other stuff, this this is a little quicker because you can obviously use the machine to to put the reference machine to put all that stuff on there then just do a capture then when you you deploy it's on there um, you know even sometimes uh, in, in, in a enterprise environment maybe even with a remote site that doesn't doesn't have a network connection back to your SCCM or your imaging server you know, something like this could could really come in handy and, and save you some time. Um, some other alternatives to this would be like Clonezilla or some disk cloning tool. Uh, I personally think this is the best way to go because with some of those tools, if your sizes of your drives vary, it doesn't really scale dynamically that well in, in my mind. So I, I think this is the best way way to go about uh, you know imaging if, if you're not using a uh, imaging server or something like SCCM uh, just a couple of things to keep in mind would be drivers you know if you're you capture if you use like a, a Lenovo whatever to capture your image and then your your image in an HP you're going to want to to get those HP drivers put on uh, after the image another thing is renaming before you you join it to the domain you're going to want to make sure or, or the work group you're going to want to make sure that you have it named whatever you want to name it because initially it's going to name it whatever you use to to capture the image so just a couple brief brief points I wanted to make before we get into this and uh, with that let's jump into it okay so I got a PC here that I just put a fresh install of Windows on I'm going to use this machine to uh, download the the tools we need to make uh, our Windows USB and our uh, PE disk USB I'm also going to use this uh, PC as uh, the capture or the, the machine that I'm going to capture uh, a whim of or an image of. So the first thing we're going to do here is we're actually going to download and, and just make a basic Windows 10 USB stick. Um, so I'll have all the links in the description for the various uh, things I'm going to download and whatnot. Additionally, if, if, if you already know how to do this part, uh, feel free to skip along. I'll have that blocked out down below as well. Um, but anyway, we're going we're gonna to need a basic USB disk for this. Uh, I would recommend getting one that's at least 32 gigs. Uh, the reason being is this basic Windows 10 setup uh, or download, it's usually only like five gigs give or take but when we do capture our own whim uh, that can tend to get pretty large it could be you know 20 30 gigs if you got a lot of pre-installed software on what you're capturing in our case we're, we're not going to put a ton of stuff on there when we capture but um, yeah that being said I, i'd recommend at least a 32 gig flash drive for that so i'm going to go ahead um 
and just confer or plug plug my flash drive in, which it is plugged in. Um, and then I'm going to navigate to this Windows 10 download um, site that once again, I'll have linked in the description. And I'm just going to hit download now under create Windows 10 installation media. So I'm going to go ahead and launch that. Um, launch that executable. This should pop up, say, getting a few things ready. Right. Once that's done, we're just going to hit accept. When we get to this screen, we're going to want to select the second option here to uh, create installation media. I'm going to leave that. Uh, leave that set for the recommended options for this PC. Uh, in our case, we're going to want to make an ISO file. Going to hit next. And um, I'm just going to write the ISO file to the root of C. I'm going to work, work, in the, work off that directory. Keep that simple. So then it's going to start downloading. And uh, it, it, this part should take, should take a little bit, but you'll just have to be patient through this. Okay, once that's finished up, we're just going to go ahead and hit finish. It's going to say it's uh, cleaning some things up and at a close that window. So you go ahead and X out of this tab if you still have this open for the download Windows 10. And now we're going to go ahead and, and download Rufus. So again, I'll have that linked in the description. But if we follow the link to their site, we're just going to go ahead and download the most... Uh, up-to-date uh, available option for Rufus and then run that executable. So we'll go ahead and say yes, allow it to check for an update. So once it once it does finish, um, it's, as long as you just have your one USB plugged in, it should automatically detect it. If you have other things plugged in, just confirm you got the right uh, disk selected here at the top. Um, for that, for the disk or ISO image, we're just going to point it to that Windows ISO that's sitting on C that we just uh, downloaded. Go ahead and select that. I like to format my drives, my USBs, to, to use NTFS. Most machines this day support NTFS booting, and, and uh, it's just my preferred file system to work with so for for this i'm actually going to go ahead and enable all of these it's just going to make the process of installing windows once we stop it with our own custom whim a little quicker when, when we're going around to machines is it's not going to you know prompt us for for various things it's going to skip through those so going to go ahead and let this run and shouldn't take overly long but it, it'd take a second or two so we'll just sit back and wait on that okay so once rufus is done we can go ahead and just take a quick peek inside of our usb drive in the file explorer if it looks something like this it's it's good to go um if you want to just go into properties double check make sure it's give or take five gigs uh, as long as it looks like that and it's give or take five gigs it's uh can almost guarantee that you did that part right so now we're gonna dive into the part of making the Windows PE disk. So for this, we will need a separate USB. This one does not need to be as big as uh, the Windows PE disk. It, it, it's, it's rather small, but uh, I, we will need a separate USB disk for this. Um, if we follow the, the link that I'll have in the description for downloading the Windows 80K and the Windows PE add-on, we'll end up here. And I'm working with Windows 10 right now, so I'm just going to scroll down here and find the most latest release for, for Windows 10 for the 80K and for the PE add-on. So I'm just going to download the 80K first. I'm going to go ahead and launch that executable. I believe this is the default path. Uh, I'm going to say no for sending anonymous data. I'm going to accept that. And I'm actually going to uncheck all of these minus the 
deployment tools as that's really all we're going to need for this. So I'm going to go ahead and hit install, let that run. Shouldn't take overly long. So once it's done, I'm going to choose to not launch the getting started guide at the moment. And then I'm just going to go ahead and also install the PE add-on. Just confirm it's, you know, for the correct version of Windows, whatever you're working off of at the time. So I'm going to go ahead and download that. It takes almost no time to download. I'm going to launch the executable and it's going to be the same idea here. And we're just going to let that, let that finish up. Okay. So once the two executables finish running the windows ADK and the windows PE add on, I'm going to go ahead and launch this deployment and imaging tools as admin that should have just recently installed when we ran those two executables. First thing I'm going to do is just enter copy PE, which is going to show me a couple available options for the different architectures. Um, I work exclusively with, with 64 bit. I would imagine most of you do too. So that's what I'm going to use. And I'm just going to then enter copy PE AMD 64, and I'm going to keep working off the C drive and make a folder for win PE. So basically this is just copying all those files to C win PE. Going to run that. It's going to not take very long. And now inside of that same directory, what I'm going to want to do is make a ISO file that we will then use to actually make the windows PE USB disc. So I'm just going to enter the following command, make win PE media forward slash ISO directory C win PE. The file name then is going to be really whatever you want. The, the only important thing is, uh, that it does need to be .iso extension at the end. So I'm just gonna call it winpe.iso. So basically make winpe forward slash iso directory and then directory again, winpe.iso. Go ahead and enter. It doesn't take very long at all to make. Let's go ahead and, go ahead and launch File Explorer. Uh, go into that directory. I am just confirm it's there, which it is. So now I'm going to want to go ahead and launch Rufus again. Um, at this point, we're going to want to make sure our USB disk is in the computer that we want to use to, um, we, that we want to use for the, to, to make the, the, the win PE on and, uh, this does need to be separate from the one that we made Windows 10 on. Again, it doesn't need to be very large, but we need to to have that inserted and it it, it needs to be a drive that uh, you're good with formatting or, or losing whatever on because uh, when we use Rufus, it will format it. So we're going to go ahead and launch Rufus once we got that plugged in as we got our WinPE ISO made. So make sure your, your correct drive is selected here on Rufus going to point it to the WinPE ISO. I'm going to keep working with NTFS file system and I'm just going to go ahead and hit start. It's going to say it's going to format it. I'm going to hit okay. This one won't take as long as the the uh, Windows 10 ISO did to make that USB, but it is still take a while, so we'll we'll sit back here and and let that go. Okay, so we're going to want to go ahead and, and leave that Windows PE disk inserted. And at this point, we're going to use SysPrep to, to prepare the machine to, to have its image captured. Um, like I said, we're going to want to leave that PE disk inserted because when we do run SysPrep, we're going to go going to go ahead and have the machine power off. And then when we power it back up, we're going to want to use the boot key to get right into that Windows PE to uh, actually capture the image. Um, at this point also, if you haven't already got your machine generalized or put whatever specific software on there that you need, now's the time to do it. I'm probably not gonna spend a bunch of time doing that since this is just an example video. Um, uh, just for like testing or simulation purposes, I threw one .bat 
on on the route of C just so we can confirm it works and it's there when we're done. Uh, of course, we'll also have these uh, other files that we downloaded and stuff. So so we'll have that too to you know confirm that it's actually working. But uh, yeah. Anyway. Um, so yeah, we're gonna need to go into SysPrep to to general or to to get the image or get the machine ready to be have its image captured. So that is located inside of C Windows System Thirty Two. SysPrep. Now there's a couple other things you want to keep in mind. Uh, the big one is you want to make sure BitLocker's off for this to work. So we could just do a quick search for Bit. Click Manage BitLocker. It is off. That's a big one for this. Um, anyway, we're going to go ahead and once we confirm that's off, we're going to go ahead and run SysPrep as admin. And I'm going to leave that as Enter Out of Box Experience. And I'm going to want to generalize this because I'm I unsure normally what other machines I'm going to be using it on. If I know I'm not going to be using that on other machines, it's going to be the same as whatever I'm capturing. You don't have to hit generalize, but I would recommend doing it if, if you don't know what exactly you're going to be imaging out there. Uh, I'm going to go ahead and just hit shutdown for shutdown options. And then I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to start doing this. And it'll take a couple minutes, not too long. And basically, once it's done, it's gonna gonna turn off. Okay, sorry about the change in uh, AV here, but I had to switch up how I record this portion of the video. Basically, once SysPrep uh, finishes generalizing and, and getting the machine ready to be to have its image captured, it's gonna turn off. We're just gonna turn it back on and hit the appropriate boot key to. Uh, or the appropriate F key to get into this. Please select the boot device menu. Uh, that varies based on your model. I'm using it Lenovo, so that was F12 for me. And then I'm just gonna go ahead and boot from the USB, which of course is our Windows PE disk uh, USB that we just made. And that's gonna bring us into the PE environment here. And we're gonna be able to run one simple command to basically start the process of capturing our, our image. So that's gonna be DISM uh, space capture dash image, image file C and I'm gonna call install that whim. The directory is going to be C as well. So capture.c or capture dir uh, colon C. And the name is simply going to be install. All right. So just to reiterate that, um, it's DISM forward slash capture dash image forward slash image file and that's going to be c install dot wim capture dir c and name install going to go ahead and hit enter and it's going to basically start the process of capturing this and writing it to c like we specified um it, it'll take a little bit, but uh, and the amount of time it takes is going to depend too on how much pre-installed software you put on the, the disk before you you do the capture here. Um, but basically, once it's done and it gets to 100%, you can just go ahead and exit out here in the upper right. And then, since we chose uh, to enter out of box experience post sys prep, it'd go through and ask you some of those generic questions, but um, they're so somewhat of a mood point. So, you know, you can just put whatever. Uh, I'm I'm not gonna record that portion of the the video because I don't really see the point in that. So, basically, once this gets to 100, just close out, go through those generic questions. Uh, go ahead and log back in and uh, 
then from there on I'll, I'll circle back and we'll finish this up from there. All right, so once the process of capturing the whim and going through the out-of-box experience is concluded, we can go ahead and go to the root of C, make sure install that whims there. Mine's about 11 gigs. Yours might be a little larger than that if you had uh, a decent amount of, uh, you know, software and scripts on there. I didn't have much since we were just doing this as a sort of a walkthrough. Uh, we can also eject the uh, WinPE USB and then insert the basic Windows USB we made earlier inside the sources directory on that. Uh, just take a quick note here and... Uh, We'll see the install.esd on there, and that's about three gigs. Basically, three or four gigs, give or take. Basically, what we're gonna do is uh, run a command to export our install.wim as an install.esd, and then pretty much just swap it uh, on, the, on the USB disk here. So I'm gonna open command prompt as admin to start that process. First command I'm going to enter is dism forward slash git wim info and then the wim file and we need to specify the uh, location and the name which is it's on C it's installed out wim <clears throat> and basically we just need to make note of the index here which is one as we'll need that for the next command which is dism forward slash export dash image so then we need to specify the source image file which again is c install.wim and then we need to specify that index number which is one and then we need to specify the destination uh, basically where we want to export this to Destination T S T I N A T I O N image file. Uh, now I'm just going to put it on the root of my uh, my flash drive with the basic Windows. Um, that's D in my case. You might just want to verify that that yours what yours is in the file explorer. So this part here does need to be installed at ES. ESD exactly. So I'm going to go ahead and hit enter. And it's going to start the process of exporting that image. Uh, so that will that will take a little bit, but another one of those things where we're just going to have to sit back and, and wait for this process to finish. All right. So once this has come to a conclusion and we've patiently waited for it to finish, we can go ahead and open the file explorer. Confirm our install.esd is there. Should be the same size as our, what our install.wim was. And it's simply a matter of dragging that to the sources folder to replace the, the one that was previously in there. And I mean, that's pretty much it. Now you're you're good to, to take it around and, you know, use, use this USB to, to image machines and whatever software and, and whatnot was on there when you captured that would be on it when you deploy uh, you know i think i'm going to probably conclude the video here as actually booting from a usb and and going through all that is is uh you know would be a little overkill i feel for this but uh you know the, the important thing to remember is just uh make sure you're you're doing an advanced install and uh deleting any you know partitions that might be on there so we get a true clean install you know other than that you know booting from the usb and going through all that is pretty straightforward you know just a couple of final takeaways is uh if if you ever in a position where you do have your your whim on a on a usb or two um there are ways that you can actually mount that and uh mount that whim and and make changes that you to the whim on the fly that you can look into um, probably won't get get too much into that this video may, maybe another one though uh perhaps and, and the only other piece of recommendation i i really got for for when you do that or even when you make one of these in the first place is just keep it clean 
you know, when you're working with that, because, you know, nothing's worse than having an image that's got all kinds of random files and, and gunk out there. But, but yeah, I think I'm going to wrap this up here. So if anybody has any, uh, any thoughts on this or any better ways to do it, uh, you know, feel free and, uh, you know, let me know if you have any questions in the comments and, and I appreciate the time. Thank you.